more than 100,000 Russian troops are gathering on your border in perhaps the biggest demonstration of hostility towards Ukraine. Дорогие друзья, сегодня вновь считаю необходимым вернуться к трагическим событиям. Between Russian and Ukrainian forces playing out on an island in the Black Sea. Since the end of February, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine have hitting media headlines across the global. In the media outlets on the Russia-Ukraine war, there are numerous competing narratives. In fact, the media has become the second background along with the physical one. Goffman, a Canadian sociologist, had came up a frame theory in the 1974, which claims that there are various perspectives on the same subject because the different frames in which we understand the world. In our case, the different cultural background in the different countries make their media adopt different news frames in the Russian-Ukraine war, uh, bringing different perspectives and information about the same war. This video will walk you through uh, media outlets of the New York Times, BBC, Russia Today, and the People's Daily to examine how cultures affect the news frame selection and thus create different images of the Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, to quantify a culture, we might need to use Hausfeed uh, cultural dimension theory. Hausfeed concludes six dimensions uh, in one culture, including power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation versus short-term orientation, and indulgence versus self-restraint. Uh, in this video, the dimension of the power distance and individualism versus collectivism will be applied to analyze the framing choices by the media outlets of the different countries. As a media rooted in an individualist culture, the New York Times from the US like to use a human interest framework on its coverage to this war. It focuses more on the individual Ukraine refugee or the families of the soldiers who are fighting the frontier. The New York Times used a leadership framework the least among all agents in the U.S. short power distance condition. It seldom used the opinion from the officials and experts as sources. Instead, it relies on journalists who are close to the battlefield or the residents of the war zone. British culture is similar to the American one, noted for its individualism and short power distances. BBC and the New York Times are similar in the sources and the focus groups, but on the top of that, the BBC has been paying more attention on the views of the British government officials. This is because the BBC is under the profound influence of the British government. Thus, the BBC is obligated to report the views from the official institutions. But I must make one thing absolutely clear. Yes? There can be absolutely no question of the BBC ever giving in to government pressure. Huh? Russia Today is a Russian state-run media agent in a more collectivism and long power distant society. Russia Today has adopted a point of view that is supporting and endorsing Russian military and political authorities. In other words, it leans toward the leadership framing. Russia Today is paying more attention to the performance and the battles between the Ukraine and Russian armies. It also frequently calls the Russian military and civil officials, including Putin. Although it did cover some individual soldiers' stories, the news about ordinary is still significantly lower than that of the national scope. The People's Daily, a Chinese state-run media agent, reports on the war in a style similar to Russia today. In addition, Chinese culture has a higher collectivism level and a slightly shorter power distance than Russia. This leads to People's Daily reporting few individual figures. The main focus of the People's Daily in the war is the military campaign and actions of the involved officials. The People's Daily reports were most favorable to the Russian authorities, but at the meantime, it also expressed concern about the suffering of the Ukrainian people in the war. It is an agent that sticks with the framing of the cooperation. In conclusion, in the war between Russia and Ukraine, through our selected four agents from different countries with different cultural backgrounds, we can understand how news reports were influenced by the different cultural characteristics. They cover the same world with different focuses and use diverse sources of information. 
The war is a tragedy for the ordinary people, but understanding media bias from the intellectual communication perspective is helpful to further our understanding to this conflictual status.